All right, sports fans, our game in progress. We're creating a graphical user interface. Right now, it's only going to have one button. Here's the code for it. Pause it, type it in, and then continue. Let's run it. I call the file GUI1, GUI1. Okay, there we go. Say hi. And when we click it, it says, hi there, friend. Be niftier if it popped up, you know, a new window. Let's play with that. If you pop open a new window, it's going to just have the message hi in it. There should be a really fast way of doing that rather than the way that I'm about to create it, about to do here. So we need to make another win. This win is equal to TK. We're making a brand new window. This frame is equal to frame, parentheses, this win. This frame dot pack. Arrange everything in our memory ready to display it. Una momento. see if it'll work. Text is equal to label text equals hello text.pack and that has a possibility of working. Well, it sort of worked. It created a little box. Didn't actually display the, any text in the box. But you see we created a second window based on the first one. There are easier ways of doing a message box with Python. A message box is when you pop something up and it has only like an OK button or yes or no or something like that. I'm disappointed in this one. I goofed it. Let me uh, give one more shot at it, and if it doesn't work, okay, that worked. Here's the change I want you to make to it. I just added this win in front of label, saying that that's the window that I want my text to be in. It'd be niftier if we put an OK button on this one, too. I'm not going to drive this one overboard. So here's our window. We click Say Hi. Not only does it print Hi there, it also pops open a little window that says Hello. We could change the text of that. We could change the color of it. We could make it big, you know, different font, stuff like that. Same for this one. It doesn't have to be an itty bitty window like that. You know, it could be, you know, a large button and we could position it with more accuracy.
Really? This is an example of a message box. Error! Can't write to the file. You are a complete loser. Okay. So, hopefully it won't say that. The way you do that should be with a single line of code. You do message box all lowercase. We're going to have to import that. Dot show error, and then we put some text. The first parameter in the message box is the title, and the second one is the actual message you want to display. So let's do that. We're going to add an import for the message box as well. Frankly, when it says from TK enter import star, that gets everything already. We wouldn't necessarily have to do that import message box. And we'll leave it there. Let's write a new function. Button high underscore two. That way we can uh, make a different button that calls this function. So, message box dot, I'm so forgetful, show error. Don't know if we want to make it show error. We'll find out what the other methods are. We need a title and we need some text. Let's just make sure this works first. And as a matter of fact, to make sure this works first, copy that text and then just paste it above that line that says making window. We just want to see if we get our little message box on the screen. All right, there it is. It says title and it says text. And since we told it that it was an error, it put a little X mark there. Okay, so that works, but we wanted to say something better than that, and we might not want it to look like an error message. But anyway, so the title of our box is, hello, our text is, Pleased to meet you. And if we're a Rolling Stones fan, we'd pop up another one that said, won't you guess my name? <laughs> so delete that second message box. We need to make another button that'll call that one. We could just change this one to call that one. But instead, what we're going to do, we can do most of this by cut and paste. I hope this isn't too weird. Those four lines, frame one is equal to frame win, all the way down to B1 pack. Paste it. Copy and paste, but change it to frame two equals frame. Frame two equals pack. B2 is equal to button frame two. B2 dot pack. And this command over here the name of our new function is button underscore high underscore two. So we just want to change that to button underscore high underscore two. Now when we click one, it ought to do our window that we created by hand. That's that one. Cute little teeny tiny window. And that one's a more traditional error looking message. Hello, pleased to meet you. What other things might you expect to see in a window, any window, along button, alongside buttons and then just little text fields to, that you can look at? Fuse other applications that pop open a window. What are the kinds of things you see in your application? Yeah, like check boxes or scrolling text. You know, here we've got a scrolling text field. Input fields, you know, where, you know, please enter your name, please enter your age, you know, and you have two fields on the form in which you can type those in. Those are all separate so-called widgets. The widgets are the things, and I need to make your, your Dropbox, the widgets are the buttons and the scrolling text bars and sliders and checkboxes and stuff like that.
So, maybe we ought to do our guessing game idea again. Where you type in a number, and then you click OK. If you get it right, it says yay. Otherwise, it says too high or too low. Kind of actually planning to do that on the next day, but we have considerable time left today, so let's do it. I think that's because I was planning on reviewing today. All righty. To do our guessing game GUI, GG, G, guessing game GUI, whatever. Let's make a new file from TK enter import everything. Let's pick our random number, except we're going to be really boring and just set it equal to 50. Target equals 50. And we're going to write a function that will display a message if their guess was too high or too low. But that means that we need a field named guess. So right now we're just going to set guess fit to zero. We're pretending that they typed that. So we're going to call this one check underscore guess. If target is equal to guess, yay. Print, yay. We're going to go back and change these to message boxes. LF, target is less than guess. Print, too high. LF, target is greater than guess. Print, too low. So when we click our, our guess button, it's going to call that function, which will print too high, too low, whatever. So our user interface needs two things in it. It needs a text entry field and it needs a button. And it'd be better if it had more than that, like, you know, a label for the text field so that we knew what we were supposed to be typing there. But we'll go with that for now. I'm going to try putting those in the same frame. I'm not sure it's going to work. We will revise quickly if not. We still need a window. So, let's still put our print, making window. Win is equal to TK, parentheses, in parentheses. Let's make a frame. Frame one is equal to frame, and then we pass in that window. Frame one dot pack. You know what? Let's just stop it there and run. See what that does. I'm going to call this GG. GUI for guessing game GUI. Yeah, there's our window. We haven't added any content to it, so that's why it's not displaying anything. All right, now we need let's put a text field and try to add that field. To the right, to, excuse me, to the left, and then let's try to put our button to the right. So, whoops, I'm on the wrong one. So here our guest text, the text field for their guess, 
I'm going to call that one just G text for guest text is equal to string var. It's called a string variable because it has to be in a specific data format to be displayed in one of these windows. Once we have that string var, we're going to create what's known as an entry field, or a capital E entry. And when you create an entry field, you pass in the name of the frame, and you pass in which variable is your string. So here we go. G field for, for guest field, or we could call it G entry. G entry is equal to entry. We're going to attach it to frame one. And the text variable, the whole word text variable, equals G text. Now we need to pack that. I, and I've decided against going with the idea of putting the button and the text field in the same frame until I'm absolutely sure it works. So g entry dot pack. That should give us a place on our window to enter text. Yeah, it's all that's in there, but it works. So adding a button, how did we do that? We created a second frame. Frame two is equal to frame parentheses win. Frame two dot pack. Now let's make a button. I guess we could call it B guess for the guest button <laughs> or let's just stick with button. <laughs> yeah. button is equal to button with a capital B and we have to specify a couple of things for it we need to specify which frame it's in we need to specify its text And we need to specify the function it's going to call when it is clicked. Command is equal to, and what did we call our function? Yeah, check underscore guess. I should have looked at my sample code for this a little bit more closely because... Oh, and I forgot to call button pack. What's a button pack again? I'm sorry, I'm typing and trying to... Yeah, well, um, when you call pack... Oh, heck, let's uh, go get the official explanation of it. What it does is it tells Python, okay, I've told you about these elements, now go and actually fit it all on screen. Okay. And until you do that, you don't see anything. It's my servant. <laughs> they introduce it without explaining. Alrighty. I mean, 
makes sense. So, organizes widgets into blocks before placing them into the parent window. Until we call pack, they haven't actually been added to it. They've just been created, and then pack starts shoving it out in there for us to see. Alrighty, as is, it's kind of close, but it's not really good because we're not getting the text out of the window. But if we run it, we'll see. That we have a little text field and we have a guest button. Unfortunately, it's not reading any data that we type into this. So when we press guest, it's just going to say too low because remember that we initialize that guest variable to zero. So what we need to do is to pull that data out of that input field when they click the button. Not get. I should have known. Okay, so come back up here to check guess. For this to work, we have to get the text out. I'm just going to call it text. And we call it gentry. Gentry.get. That gets that text out. I'm going to run it before I go too much farther to make sure that it actually does something. I'm going to type in 50 here. Type in guess. Okay. At least that didn't give us a syntax error. Okay, if this is a string, how do we convert it to an integer? Yeah, or that, right. Or actually, I'm going to store it in a different variable called guess. But anyways, guess is equal to int text. I'll bring that code back up. Okay, 45 was too low, 66 is too high. So it's mostly working. What we'd like to do is we'd like to pop up some messages. So if the target is equal to the guess, we're going to call message box dot show. Let's just try show rather than show error. Although error would be appropriate if, you know, if they made a bad guess. So show error. Nope. That's going to be the title of our window. And it needs to say your guess is too low. And to make things easier, I'm just going to copy that. Yeah, what do you know? That's pretty rude, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe we don't want to show that error. All righty. So the different kind of message boxes 
There's show info, show warning, which I put a little caution symbol, show error, ask question, ask OK cancel, ask yes, no, and ask retry cancel. So show info would probably be the best one at this point. So, you know what, I'm just going to cut that one and move it down to the one that says too low. And I'm going to... If they get the guess right, it's going to be message box dot show info. Yay, you got it. That's not right. It needs a title and then some text. So the title of it's going to be whoopee because apparently we're nine years old. There we go. Yay, you got it. And we've already got the text for your guess is too low. So again, I'm going to copy that and paste it into too high and then just change that text. So 25, your guess is too low. 75, your guess is too high. 50, yay, you got it. About the only changes that we could make that would make this an honest you know, on a sexual game would be to actually create that random number. And I always forget the syntax for that, no matter how many times we write these guessing games. So I'm going to Google up random number Python 3. We're going to import the random library and then we're going to call get randint which is a range of numbers and weirdly the range of numbers doesn't work like the range in the for loop or our slicing you put the top the bottom number in A and the top number in B and you don't have to do B plus you know you don't have to add one to it in order to get it to be right although there is rand range which works like that yeah let's do that just to keep it consistent so up here import random and instead of target is equal to 50 let's do random dot rand range starting at one and going up to a hundred so that's actually going to be 101 and just to make sure that that number looks good let's print it out we're going to take that out if this works did it work did it print something 93. Okay, cool. Let's comment that out. We don't need to be printing the, the random number. But let's do put a comment here. Number between 1 and 100. We honestly don't need this guess variable at all because we're using it here. So I'm going to delete that guess variable. It doesn't break anything, but I'm going to delete it. There we go. And the last thing I think would be nice is if we told them that they were within 10, you know, of the number. So let's do this. We have our guess. We have our target. If one minus the other 
is less than or equal to 10, instead of saying nope, we're going to say close. So let's do that. If, but we need to take the absolute value of it so that we don't have to check both positive and negative values. Target minus guess is greater than or equal to 10, colon. Title is equal to close guess, else colon title is equal to incorrect guess. And then replace those two calls to nope with that variable that we created. Title, like that. Now, I didn't indent much because I was trying to keep all the text on the same screen. Just use normal tabs for your indents here. All right, I don't know my random number, so now it's an actual game. 30. Guess. Your guess is too low. It didn't say I was close. So, I'm going to make a much larger guess. 70. Your guess is too high. It still didn't say that I was close. I hope that that feature works. 50. I should have started off with 50, actually. Your best bet for doing these kind of things is to always pick half of your range. So if your numbers are between 1 and 100, just guess 50, you know, first. And then either go to 25 or 75. It says close guess. Okay. And my guess is too low. So I'm going to go to 55. Your numbers are different, so I don't know why I'm listing every one of them. All right, mine was 58. The last fun thing to do would be to keep track of the number of guesses they've made. So to do that, we need a counter. So here where we did target is equal to, and I should be checking to make sure it's working for everybody. Who's getting syntax errors? All right, just a sec. Thank you. Sure. So what we want to do is we want to counter. Tell them how many guesses it took them. So let's just call it counter is equal to zero. And inside this function, we're going to say, or maybe we don't even need to do this. Let's just, let's just try it. We're going to increment counter by one. So counter plus equals one. Now we need to decide where to display the number of guesses. All I can think of is doing this for now. This was a neat feature, but I'm not thinking of how to mix this information with the other one in an easy fashion, so comment those lines out. And let's make a title that says guess number plus the string version of counter. We're usually converting from strings to ints, but here we're converting from an int to a string. And then let's just stick that word title in all of our messages. Let's get rid of whoopee comma, leave the comma though, and change that to title. Unexpected indent. I think it's about time for me to actually tab these correctly. Oh my God. All 
Uh, local variable counter reference before assignment. Counter plus equals one. Now we defined counter up here. Let's add the word, and we haven't talked about this, global in front of that word counter here and check guess. Let me run that really bad, make sure it works. Invalid syntax. Oh, error. Okay, we're going to break that into two lines. Global counter, counter plus equals one. I thought in Python 3 we might be able to get away with that. I'll tell you what global means in just a minute. Your guess is too low. Guess number one. Your guess is too low still. Maybe we could put that uh, business about close guess back in. It may take an if, l, if, l, if to get it right. But move that title is equal to guess number up to the top, and this will be the last change we make. And if we're going to change this a little bit, if target not equal to guess and absolute value of the guess minus the target is equal to 10, then title plus equals close guess. But let's put a space there so that it'll look better. Yeah, it's geas. <laughs> Alrighty. And I think that's enough. I'm just going to delete that else entirely. My guess is too high. I want to see it say close guess, so I'm going to keep keep after it until I do. This TK there is kind of tedious. We ought to put a better title there, like guessing game. I'm just going to play with it for a little while until I see it say close guess. Close guess. Okay, it finally worked. It finally told me that it was a close guess. The final change I would be neat to make is rather than pop up a window like this, to just display that right here, you know, because it's kind of annoying to type in a number, click guess, have to come over here and click OK. It'd be neat if these messages were showing up actually in the box. So we'll work on making a better graphical user interface application on Thursday after we do a review of the exam. But I think this is a pretty good example. I'm not going to expect you to write one of these by memory. I'm not even sure I'm going to give you a graphical user interface. I may. We'll decide that on Thursday. But what I really want you to remember is that this is how you create you make the window, you make a frame, you call dot pack on it. You make some stuff that goes in the frame, and then you call dot pack on that. And you make something else that goes in the frame, and you call dot pack on that. I'm going to rearrange this to slightly different, not because I think it's a great idea, but just to see if you like the way it looks better. 
What if we did this? Win is equal to TK. Frame 1 is equal to frame win. Frame 2 is equal to frame win. And now I'm going to move all my packs to the bottom. I'm not sure I like the way this looks better or not. Maybe arrange them like that. Firstly, let's make sure it works. And like I said, I'm not recommending you actually do it like that. I kind of like creating them and packing them right on the spot. But maybe it looks more logical if you create all your frames at one time. And then you create all your items. Maybe packing them after you create all your frames would look nice. You know, like this, frame one is equal to that. If we had five frames, we would create five in a row. Then we would call dot pack on them. Okay, I'm not going to go any further with that because I was just about to make it really weird. Okay. I was going to stick all of them in a list and then write a loop that would call dot pack on all of them. I'm going to undo these changes because I'm not convinced that it made it any clearer. Create a frame. Create an object that goes in that frame. Create another frame. Create another object that goes in that frame. And so on. And we can position them more precisely than what we've done so far. All right, go ahead and upload GUI1 and GGGUI to the Dropbox, and we are done for today. Could you leave the first one up that you did? You, you need to see GUI1? Sure. All right, it's a little bit too much to fit on the screen, but I'll leave this part. Is that? Oh, no, the very first one. Not, not, this is the second one to me, I think. Oh, no, that's it. No, no, no that's it. Okay. Yeah, mine was at the top. It's somewhere I went wrong at the top. So as review, here's the first one we typed. If you're playing at home, there's the top of it. And then I'll scroll down and you can get the bottom of it. Alright. Here's the second program, starting from the top. Scrolling down. The very last thing. 